recognize her. We rely on her reporting skills and military analysis as well. But Leah Gabriel hasn't stopped flying since her days as a pilot of an F-18 in the U.S. Navy. But when she came to New York City and joined us here at Fox, she left her plane in California. And I guess, uh, what, were you running up a bill at the airport? You had to move it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted it here so that I could fly it. And I actually set out on this journey across America right after July 4th weekend. So I decided to call my trip the Freedom Tour. And I knew it would just offer some incredible views that you don't normally get to see. And I wanted to be able to share those. So take a look at some of the sights that you don't get to see when you fly cross-country in an airliner at 40,000 feet. This is what I used to fly for the U.S. Navy, an F-18 Hornet. Two engines, one seat, top speed, 1,200 miles per hour, and a price tag of about $30 million. Now that I'm no longer landing on aircraft carriers and the Navy is no longer buying my fuel, this is what I fly, a Cessna 172. One engine, four seats, top speed, about 120 miles per hour. Cost, about what most Americans spend on a new car. And then put it somewhere where you can have access to it. Henry Sickles, a fellow veteran, began fixing up my plane when I left San Diego to join Fox News. Now it's time to fly her to my new home in New York, a coast-to-coast -coast adventure. To me, flying is the ultimate freedom to go where I want, when I want, one of the greatest gifts of our land of the free. My co-pilot and photojournalist for the trip, Fox News anchor John Scott. How does it feel to be crossing this airspace at 110 knots? I feel like I'm in a helicopter right now, as opposed to, you know, I can go to the speed of sound, I'm left 18, I can go faster than that. I did a lot of flying here, back when I was in the military, especially in flight training. So right now we're approaching the start of the sea, and it goes to our south, and some bomb ranges where I dropped quite a few practice bombs. It's uh, moderate to heavy precipitation, about 5 miles in diameter. So we have a little diversion. Yeah, we have a little bit of a diversion. Thunderstorms offer their own kind of beauty, an awesome power, enough to take down even an F-18, so we give them plenty of room. Our first stop, an airport on the edge of one of America's greatest natural wonders, the Grand Canyon, and we're treated to a bird's eye view. Takeoff, we're flying over the surface of Mars. At least that's how the Painted Desert appears from 2,000 feet above it. The chart here, we've got, got that storm over there to the right. And with more thunderstorms ahead, we decide to land earlier than intended, Gallup, New Mexico, to fill our tanks and check the weather. Now we're back on the road, literally, and we're following I 40, Interstate 40. This will take us all the way into Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's if the weather holds up. Just off to my left are the Sandia Mountains. Once we clear this mountain range, we can basically start heading northeast and to New York City. As you can see, the terrain has changed quite a bit. Lots of flatlands instead of all that mountainous terrain that we were seeing before. We're headed to Amarillo. The sun should be setting in the next 10 minutes or so. I'm pushing it's real easy, so you're not going to see one of those gorgeous Texas sunsets. But hopefully we'll be up bright and early tomorrow morning and see the sunrise here in Texas. One of the greatest parts of this trip were some of the wonderful people that we met along the way, including some people who watch Fox News every day. Tomorrow you'll get to meet some of them, and you'll also get to see what it looks like to fly right into New York City, right over the Statue of Liberty at night, and eye level with some of the skyscrapers. That's fantastic. You had a pretty good uh, camera guy. I had a great camera guy <laughs> slash co-pilot, John Scott. Hopefully we'll be able to get him in here tomorrow morning so he can talk a little bit about the experience. Breathtaking stuff. Great stuff. Lee Gabriel, yeah. thank you. Knocking our socks thank off. You. Thanks. All right. You remember this? Yesterday we took off in flight with Leah Gabriel as she began her journey across the country using the skills she learned as a U.S. Navy F-18 fighter pilot. Well, today she's back with her co-pilot for that journey. We're talking Fox News anchor John Scott, who works in this very room in a couple of hours, and he'll put on a necktie at that time. Right. Yeah, you, I you guess guys don't pay enough. enough you know. don't pay enough to get the yeah, necktie. We're going to get you a tank top. We got you a bit earlier. <laughs> What's going on? How did you guys decide to take this trip? Freedom Tour, as you dubbed it yesterday, across the country together. 
Well, that's a bit of a longer story. Now, as you remember, my plane was in San Diego getting work done. Yeah. That's where I used to live, and I had to fly across country. And John and I actually ended up um, sort of co-anchoring some breaking news about a plane that... I saw that. Did you see that? Yeah. And we had been taught we'd flown when together. When it was all over, he says, oh, I'm bringing my plane back next week. It happened that I was out in California that week with my daughter looking at colleges, so I said, I'll go with you. And I can out. save money on the ride home. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, as you know, this opportunity, this just really offered, um, gave us a great vantage point that people don't usually see this country from, and it gave us the opportunity to meet some of the wonderful people who make this country so great. Freedom Tour, seeing this beautiful country coast to coast from a single engine Cessna. Departing San Diego and crossing the Southern California desert brought back memories of my training time as a Navy pilot flying an F-18. Now as day three begins, we depart Amarillo. Departing via to the north of Treatwood. It's really beautiful here over the flatlands of Texas. It's amazing just how much the terrain has changed just a few hundred miles. Watching the handiwork of the American people unfold below is fascinating. The spider webs of oil fields, the giant turbines spinning wind into electric power, and the farms that feed our nation and the world. Taking it in from the right seat, my co-pilot and photographer. You might know him as Fox News anchor John Scott. What made you want to come on this cross-country mission with me? Who wouldn't want to fly cross-country in a 172? Really? Especially with you. Aww. And one of the thrills of flying a small airplane? You can drop into tiny airports where the airlines can't go. Over southeast Kansas, we need a place to refuel. And Eureka! We found it! I taxi right to the doorstep of Air Force veteran Larry Dutton. Turns out he used to teach at a survival school like I had to endure the Navy. His wife Debbie is a veteran too, and we snap photos and swap stories as the symbol of this land we serve waves proudly under the Kansas sky. We launch again, this time skimming emerald green pastures, then floating over cotton candy clouds, experiencing the most exhilarating freedom in the greatest country on earth. After stopping for the night in St. Louis, we make the final push towards New York. Where the West was bone dry, this stretch of the Mississippi is muddy and flooding. And overflying the airport at Terre Haute tells me we've reached our ninth state along this journey. Down there, the lush green fields, sparkling blue lakes of Indiana, this truly is America the Beautiful. It's to be our longest day of flying, both in miles and hours. After a fuel stop north of Dayton and a dinner stop in Pennsylvania, the daylight is gone. We take off into blackness, heading east, searching for the lights of the Big Apple. We spot the Verrazano Bridge and turn north of the Hudson River, and we're guided by the beacon of the lady who's welcomed millions to this land of the free. There she is, Lady Liberty. What a thrill to be flying right to New York City at night. Amazing, beautiful view. She shows the way to yet another of America's greatest sights, the dazzling New York skyline. Empire State Building right there. There is no better way to come to New York City. Minutes later, we touch down, mission complete. Nearly 24 hours of flight time, coast to coast, more than 2,600 miles, crossing 13 states. My freedom tour is in the books now, but my appreciation for this great country, still flying high. voice as we were coming into New York City, seeing the lights, but you know, this was really about the journey, and I just felt like I was so lucky to have not just another great pilot with me, but someone who could shoot the whole thing for us so that we could all enjoy it, and we came back. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun, and you were telling us that, uh, you know, one of the things about an older plane like this one is there's a lot going on at the time. He doesn't have an autopilot. So. <laughs> this is my autopilot. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and what was the longest period you were actually in the air consecutively? How many hours? You know, the longest we went was probably, what, like three and a half? Yeah, you're, you're limited by fuel. And she likes to land. She's more conservative than I am. She likes to land early. She, she, likes, like to she, likes, she likes to land with fuel still in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> like but, most ladies, right? Yeah. Well, a great flight, and thanks for taking us on the Freedom Tour. Yes. So cool. What a neat hobby for us to be here. Thanks for almost dressing up. All right. Uh, and, John, we will clean up the studio. It'll be nice and tidy at 11 o'clock. Please. Put your tie and coat. We're going to blow